Hello and welcome to this video where we'll be taking a look at another RGB mod on a Sony Trinitron. Now I got this TV a few weeks back. It was located about 5 minutes away from me and I thought it would be a bit of fun to have another go at RGB modding a CRT. As I may have said in my other videos, here in Australia, whilst we use the same PAL format as the UK and Europe, SCART connectors were never a common input over here. A few European TVs such as Philips, Lowe and Grundig do tend to have them though. On consumer Trinitrons it's very rare to see any form of RGB input in Australia. So what we've got here is a KVT29SF8 model from around the year 1997. It's in great condition and had a really good picture even for composite, so I was pretty excited to get stuck into an RGB mod, so let's open it up. Looking at the video processor, we see it's a Philips TDA8375A, and checking the datasheet for this IC shows it does indeed have RGB inputs. Even better is that we have an unpopulated connector here at CN106, which I've just quickly wired up for testing and this is where I ran into my first problem. Firing up the TV, I got just a black screen. I was getting audio but no picture. Removing my 5 volt blanking input gave me a composite image just fine, but when I reapplied it the screen would go to black. I knew the problem lay with the 5 volt input, and found that dropping the voltage by using a resistor would enable RGB, but I then noticed another issue. This may be hard to see as I'm filming on a phone, but there's a sort of ghosting artifact occurring just to the right of the image. I thought this might be the composite signal somehow ghosting through, and it really had me stumped for several days. I tried using a potentiometer on the 5V input in case that was still the problem, but it didn't fix the issue. No amount of research helped and I was just about ready to give up. Eventually I thought I'd have a quick glance through the service menu to see if there was anything in there I could tweak that may narrow down whatever this problem was, and thankfully I found out the cause. Disabling the vertical modulation feature solved my ghosting issue immediately. On most sets this is referred to as VM, it's a sort of artificial way of adding sharpness and not something I'm particularly a fan of. I thought it would be useful to share this in case anyone else has run into this problem, as it had been driving me up the wall. I had a few tests with different systems and was really pleased with the results. Obviously footage from a phone isn't going to do this justice, but it's just to show that it's all working at least. If you've done this mod before, or are looking to try it yourself, then you may notice once you have your RGB image on the screen, it's actually a little shifted to the left. This is something we can adjust in the service menu to realign the image. On most Trinitron sets, the method for accessing the service menu is to put the TV in standby mode, and press these buttons on the remote. Display, 5, and volume up. From here you'll need to find the horizontal adjustment option, which in the case of this TV is the first menu item. I suggest using a service manual to make sure you know exactly what you're changing. The next step is my least favourite, and that's adding a SCART port to the TV. I hate cutting up plastic and permanently modifying something. I'm not the neatest person when it comes to these DIY jobs either. I used the drill and carefully worked outwards to create a hole, moving on to a small file to neaten everything up. A quick test fit and I'm pretty happy with it. I 
can tidy everything up and start putting the TV back together. So here we are, all finished and ready to go, and I'm really pleased with how this all turned out. Usually when a TV has a video chip that's RGB ready and an unpopulated connector it's very straightforward, but this Trinitron did resist a little bit. It's set up as close to a factory scar as I can make it. I basically want this TV to be as simple as possible to use without using any extra switches or forced 5 volt toggles. Any Euro scar connector should work fine. At this stage I consider this TV finished and ready for some good gaming sessions. I'll leave you with a little bit of footage captured from my phone. It's not the best for CRT capture, but hopefully it's enough to show it's working well. In real life it looks fantastic. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.